several scriptures today. And if you will be kind enough to look at Luke, the 22nd chapter of the Gospel of St. Luke, I'm going to read, and we'll just start at verse 31. We'll start at verse 31, and we'll read down to verse 34. Just to teach. Luke 22. Beginning with verse 31. You have it? Amen. Amen. I'm reading from the King James Version. We'll read together. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to sin, that he may sift you as me. But I have prayed for thee, and thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brother. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both into prison and to heaven. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day, before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou shalt know the truth. Father, unctionize us for this moment and for this hour. Let your word go forth with power. We thank you for Jesus today. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I have a word. I want you to spell because it's in my subject. My diction may not be the best. My grammar may be a little poor, so I'm going to ask you to spell this word after I spell it. M-U-S-T. Would you spell it? M-U-S-T. Oh, that's not. I'm going to use it in the plural sense. <laughs> I'm going to use it in the plural sense. God's for must. Must for the believer. God's for must for the believer. I have several scriptures that I want to look at, but you can see these four must as they are displayed through the life of Peter. Amen. We're going to look in his life and then we'll see the four must. And I hope this West Virginia boy is pronouncing them correctly. The first must And it's found in Matt. You don't have to go to it. I'll read it to you. Because I'm coming back to Peter. I'm to Luke. I'm coming back to Luke. But this is the text for the first month. This is the text. You can study it when you go home. It's found in Matthew 26 and 75. Matthew 26 and 75. I'm coming back. God's first must is that every believer that is not right must get right with God. Amen. God's first must is that every, every believer that is not right must get right with God. Amen. Now I'm going to read the text for it in case I don't get to it. 
You'll find it in Matthew 26 and verse 75. And Peter remembered the word which Jesus had said before the cock crowed, you will deny me thrice, three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. He wept bitterly. Back to Luke. Look at the backdrop for this, this text. Look at the backdrop. Back to Luke. You notice here that God, the Lord, is sitting here at the table. He's getting ready to die. I just admire Jesus. And he, in verse 31, he calls Peter's name twice. Simon, Simon. That's his old name. He didn't call him by his new name. He gave him a new name, Peter. But he was not going to live out his new identity. He was going to revert back to his old, his old nature. And he was identified with his death. So he called him by his old name. Did you notice? He called it twice. The reason for that? It was an act of love and also a warning. An act of love and also a warning. He was warning him. Simon, Simon, the devil is out to get you. He wants you. He's like a roaring lion. He's out to get us. He's out to get us. Everybody in this room. Amen. Amen. Everybody, including this preacher, Amen. he's out to get us. Amen. He, he wants to sift us. Amen. But the devil is alive. Amen. Amen. The devil is alive. The devil is alive. You notice. The you, the you, Simon, Simon, Satan has after this, Satan has desired you. Now the you is plural. It's plural because if you look in verse 22, yes, in the same verse 22, The you is poor because all of them were arguing. They were poor. There was strife. The text said there was strife. There was division among them. And whenever there is strife, we're a target for the devil. You can get into your home. You can get into the church. They were arguing. They were saints, but they were arguing. Strife. Vision. You know what they were arguing over? Who was going to be the greatest? Who was going to be the greatest? They believed he was going to set up a kingdom immediately. And he is going to set up a kingdom one day. Amen. And they were arguing who was going to get them high seats. Top dogs. So there was division of the land. There was division among them. I want you to notice Peter's response. He responded by disagreeing. He disagreed with the law. In fact, if you go back to Matthew, I'm not going to turn to it. He even compared himself with others. He said, even though all men, 
All, all, everybody may betray you or deny you. But I will never, I will never, though all men betray you, I will never, never be offended. That was dangerous. He that thinketh he standeth, take heed. Lest he fall. He was on slippery ice. He was on slippery, 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 slippery ice. Slippery ice. It had been prophesied by Zechariah, the 13th chapter, that all the disciples were going to flee. The shepherd would be smitten and all of his, his disciples would flee. It had been prophesied. Yes. But we should never argue with the word of God. Yeah. We should believe it. We should obey it and believe God's word. Amen. Obey it. Obey it. Don't argue with it. Believe it. Believe it and obey it. Amen. Believe it and obey it. And I haven't started shouting yet. I don't even know if I'm going to shout today. <laughs> Jesus prayed for him. He said, I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. Courage did fail, but his faith didn't fail. His courage, his courage failed. Judah's faith failed, and he never came back. He apostatized. He never, never came back. Went out and killed himself. Peter's courage failed. I want just to look at him as he failed here. In Matthew 26 and 7, verse 70, we see him failing here. A little girl recognized him there at the fire. And the first thing he did, he lied. The first thing he did, in verse 70, he lied. In verse 72, he took an oath to confirm the lie. He used an oath. I swear I don't know Jesus. He took an oath. In verse 74, he began to curse and to swear. Now the Bible doesn't tell us what he was saying when he was cursing. But whenever the Jews took an oath, they took it in the name of Yahweh. That's bad. That is bad. Now he's falling. He's going down. He swore that he did not know the Son of God. He swore. And we find him here in verse 74, 26 and 74, the cock, the rooster began to crow. And he was convicted. He was convicted. And in verse 75, notice what happened. He wept bitterly. It was the tears were really falling. It was a genuine. He, he, he was genuine in his repentance. Amen. He was genuine. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 7, 10, 7 and 10, Godly sorrow worketh repentance to some salvation, not to be repented all, but the salvation of the world 
work of death. Amen. Judas regretted. That's the sorrow of the world. And they never change. But if it's godly, you'll change. Amen. That's the difference. Judas might have cried, but he did hug himself. It was the sorrow of the world. It was only a regret. He regretted that he got caught. He regretted it, but his sorrow was not genuine. Because if he had been genuine, he would have turned. He would have turned. Peter's sorrow was genuine. Bonafide. I love that. I see you all fan. Maybe you all must have there. Okay. Take your time and, and when you get go home sometime, you can just look at this scripture, Luke 24 and verse 34, 1 Corinthians 15 and 5, 1 Corinthians 15 and 5. Did you know that when Christ was resurrected from the dead, do you know who he appeared to first? Peter. Peter. Not to all the disciples, but to that guy <laughs> that said, I don't know you. I know what he was doing when the two of them were alone. So he could get like this dog. Amen. Amen. Church, all of us here this morning. Amen. Everybody, including this preacher, that because that sense of omission as well as commission, Amen. we all need to get right with God. Because yeah. yeah. the world is getting worse, but we need to get closer. Walk in communion with God. Walk in close communion with God. Look at the second must of God. And I'm going to jump over to John chapter 21. You can go over these scriptures when you get home. John chapter 21 and verse 6. We'll look at the second must. The second must. Let me give you the backdrop. Christ is resurrected from the dead. He told the disciples, I'm going to meet you in Galilee. And they all, six of them, you'll find here, well actually there seven of them, they went fishing. They fished all night long and caught nothing. Maybe they shouldn't have been out there. Because over there in Luke, chapter 5, verses 1 through 11, they have forsaken these boats. That was not their calling. They shouldn't have been out there. But yet they was out there, and the Lord knew where they were. So you find the resurrected Christ standing on the beach of Galilee. They didn't know it was Jesus. And they had fished all night long and they had caught nothing. And in verse 5, he said, standing on the shore, they did not recognize him. Basically, he said there in verse 5, children, have you caught any fish? Amen. Basically. And there was a frustrated no. No! Fishing. Fishing is hard work. Amen. It was hard work. So in verse 6, he gave some instructions. And this is important. This principle is very important because it works today. When you are failing, this is a principle and it works today. It has worked in my life and it will work in your life. When you are failing, you must listen and obey the Lord's direction. Amen. You must listen. You must get a rhema. You have to hear it. 
then you must obey. You must be specific and follow his directions. Because he said, take the net from the left side of the boat and cast it on the other side. That's all. That's all they had to do. And guess what? They caught 150 big fish. You have to hear, I have, whenever I'm in a crisis, and I don't know where to turn, I shut up. I always shut up in a room alone. I don't want to hear from nobody. I even take the phone off. Because I have to hear from God. Romans 10, and that's, I know you know it. Romans 10 and verse 17 says, Faith. That's what I need. <clears throat> Coming, it's got to come. Yeah. By hearing, Rhema. Yes. And hearing by the word of God. Yes. God will tell you what to do. Yes. Yes. Amen. I'm telling Amen. you. Yes. He'll tell you what to do. And how to do it. Yes. And when to do it. And you will turn that failure into success. Now, if you're spinning your wheels, meditate on these verses. Because these principles work. You will find when you go home, I'm not going to turn to it. If you will read Luke. The fifth chapter, verses 1 through 11, he had, that's the same way this principle had worked before. They had fished all night long. And they were cleaning up their nets to go home. And he told them to launch out into the deep. Amen. Yes. Now, you don't catch fish in the Galilean Sea in the daytime. Fish come in to the shore to feed at night. Peter first protested, but he obeyed. And they caught so many fish that the boats were sinking. You have to hear. Some of you need to get a ring. You got to first hear. Then you must obey his direction. And he'll turn your faith into success. I'm a witness. That's how I made it. That's how I made it 34 years in New Jersey. Amen. I had to learn that God is my soul. Amen. My, your job is not your soul. God is your soul. Amen. And you let your back get up against the wall so you can learn who is your soul. And if you're spinning your wheels this morning in the sand, stop the car and get out. Stop your car and get out and wait before the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew, exchange. Renew there is exchange. You exceed it, you that that jadiness, that that tiredness that you're burning out. You're burning out. Your, your output is greater than your intake. Yes. The world calls it a burnout. No Christian should burn out. Amen. There's enough strength from God to renew us. Amen. The world burns out, not us. Because we know how to renew our strength. It comes from God. It comes from God. Let me get the third one here. It's found in John 21, verses 15 through 17. Now, we may not want this one. We may not want this one. 
but there was someone in my house, and I won't call no names, because I gotta go back home. They, they used to sing all the time, and it used to impress me. Lord, make me a servant, a little child of mine. And that used to get me. It, it grabbed me. It grabbed me. That's what Jesus is teaching here. John 21, verses 15 through 7. If you love God with wholehearted devotion, He'll make you a blessing to others. Amen. Amen. That's what you find here in these verses. Yes. If you love God with that sacrificial, wholehearted devotion, He'll make you, He'll transform you into a blessing Amen. Amen. to others. In fact, if you read chapter, the, the second chapter of Paul's epistle there in Philippians, the, the theme of that chapter is others. That's the whole theme of the whole chapter. Being a blessing to others. And the love that he's talking about here is the kind of love that a husband must have for his wife. It's a God paid love. It's agape love. Phileo is mentioned here, friend, a love for a friend to friend, but that kind of love won't work in a marriage. Uh-uh. It ain't going to work in a marriage. In fact, if you read over there in Ephesians, the fifth chapter, somewhere around the fifth verse, it's the kind of love that Christ has for his church. So a man must have for his wife. That's the kind of love. Amen. Not buddy, buddy. It won't work for the wolf. Love expresses kindness. Amen. It's the way a woman's wired. It's the way she's wired. And it brings out the best yes. in her. Yes. If a man loves her. This is the agape love. Let me say a word to single women, the single people, all the single people in the building. Say amen. Amen. Oh. <laughs> a message to you. If you single, single young man and single young woman, if you will give that wholehearted, devotional love to Christ, yes. I promise you, yes. on the word of God, that your life will come to full fruition upon this earth. Amen. Amen. Not only that, that promise over there in the book of Jeremiah, the 29th chapter and verse 11 will come to fulfillment in your life. You have a beautiful future. Yes. You have a beautiful future. Yes. See, the devil today is messing over our young people, yes. our young women. Yes. Yes. He's fooling them. He's deceiving them. They're looking for love in the wrong places. I challenge you this morning. Give that wholehearted love and devotion to God. And your life is going to come to full fruition Amen. upon this earth. Amen. That's what these verses is all about. Did you know that books and books and books and books have been written about Peter? Churches are named. Organizations are named behind Peter. Peter. Because he said, feed my sheep. Tend my lambs. Amen? Amen? Let me give you one more. Let me give you just one more. And then look over here. It's John. <coughs> look at verse 19. John 21, verse 19. John 21 and verse 19. 
Notice what he said to Peter. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Now, when I take up my cross and follow behind my Lord, what will happen in my life is Colossians 1 and verse 24 will be fulfilled in my life. Colossians 1 and verse 24. Whenever I take up my cross and I follow behind my Savior, first I'm going to end up at Calvary. If you follow behind Jesus, the first place you will go is Calvary. Flesh has to be put to death. There will be trials. And some of you are going through trials this morning. If you haven't arrived at Calvary, you're on your way. You're going to Calvary. And Colossians 1 and 24 is going to be fulfilled in your life. You fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in your body. That's what happens when you fall behind Jesus. Colossians 1 and 24. You fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Jesus. Because you, Jesus, are you listening? Amen. Jesus suffered because he was atoning for my sins Amen. and your sins. Amen. He suffered so until they, he was made, he was made sin. And I don't even know what that means. But I feel on that cross, God made him into sin. Because of my sins and your sins. That's why he suffered. I'm suffering down here every time I go into the devil's territory and witness to somebody, the devil attacks me. I have to experience the suffering that is necessary to reach for that person. And some of you will suffer on your job. Have you noticed that the Muslims don't suffer like you suffer? Mm -mm. They ain't got no anointing on them. You've got the anointing of God yeah. upon your life. Yeah. And the devil doesn't want you there. Yeah. That's why you suffer. Yeah. They love to run you off of that job. Yeah. You've got to experience the suffering that is necessary to proclaim his message. To the Lord. That's some suffering. Amen. Yes. Have you ever read 2 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, all the suffering that Paul went through? And I used to wonder why it was necessary if you go to witness to the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. God has four months. Where are you at today? If you're sitting in this room, are you right with God? Are you right with God? Are you in the right fellowship with God? That's important. Amen. That's important. If you're lost, you need to get right with God. God has provided Jesus for us. Amen. And he wants us to accept his son. There is no other way. Jesus is the only way. Amen. No other way. Jesus is the only way to heaven. You ain't going to get there no other way. Amen. That's enough. Amen. Stand on your feet.